Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle products that are friendly to your skin. So if that's your thing, please consider hitting subscribe anytime during the video. And now you know what time it is. It is time for December favorites, the very last favorites video of 2021. So if you're so ready to just dive right in, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <music> Let's kick it off with the Isentree Chestnut BHA 2% Clear Liquid. Now this is a new release from Isentree and this actually really feels like the Korean skincare dupe for Polish Choice BHA Liquid. Like these are very, very similar and I have to tell you the Polish Choice BHA has been named a favorite uh, Back in the summer, I think it was of this year, I've been using and really enjoying that product for all the blackheads that I get on my nose. And um, this new release from Isentree feels so incredibly similar and maybe even just a little bit better. This uses 2% of salicylic acid, which is kind of unique for Korean skincare. It's not really unique for Western skincare, but in Korean skincare, you know that they favor betaine salicylate, which is the more gentler, maybe even weaker form of salicylic acid. It is related. It works in the same way. It is classified as a BHA chemical exfoliant, but it's going to work a lot slower and a lot more gentle on the skin. So I love to use BHA just in my t-zone usually um, I do have combination skin I'm always saying my skin is super duper dry but it is technically it is technically combination and that t-zone can get a little bit more oily a little bit more prone to congestion a little bit more prone to blackheads especially on my nose and because my skin can get incredibly imbalanced in the winter time and that u-zone which is normally a little bit on the dry side goes extremely dry in the winter that's when i'm piling on more nourishing rich layers which can sometimes make the blackheads on my nose become a little bit more obvious. It can kind of overwhelm that area of my skin just a little bit. So having a BHA exfoliant that I use once or twice a week just to kind of help refine the pores, kind of help keep the gunk from building up inside of them is really helpful. So I just put this on a reusable cotton pad and just kind of direct it in the area of my nose. And this is actually a really great um, piece of advice for anybody with combination skin, anybody with sensitive skin, you know, any Anybody who is just feeling like there's one area of their face that's doing something a little bit different than the rest of their skin, feel free to use your skincare just in the targeted areas where it's needed. If I were to put BHA all over my face with my U-zone being so dry and sensitive, yeah, I'd be in full blown irritation right now, but where I need it is my nose and that's where it can take it. And so just targeting skincare where you need it can actually save you a lot of headaches. So don't, you know, don't be afraid to experiment with that. So anyways, I've been replacing my Polish Choice BHA with this, and this has been performing neck and neck with Polish Choice BHA. And as I kind of teased you earlier, I almost even feel like this is even slightly better. And there's really two very minor reasons. And I actually wrote down when I was like kind of collecting my thoughts for this video, it was like, this is 5% better than Polish Choice. <laughs> It's 5% better because of two things. Number one, the Polish Choice BHA sometimes feels a touch oily, just like it has this weird like little oil slip to it. It's really not a big deal, but it's just something that I noticed with the product itself that I don't notice in the Isentree texture. This is very liquidy and watery. It doesn't have like an oil feel to it at all. All. The second thing that I noticed the difference here is Polish Choice has a little bit of a smell. It really doesn't bother me. It's an unscented product. Um, it does have a little bit of a scent that fades away after application, but there's really no like kind of odd scent to the Isentree on application at all. And so that's why I said, I think this is like 5% better. When it comes to results though, I think the, they're both like the same. I think this is really truly a Korean skincare dupe meaning duplicate, right? Very much the same. And this has been keeping my pores so 
clear and refined and I'm so excited about that. So next up, I want to talk about the La Roche Posay Lipicar Wash AP Plus. You've been seeing this a lot in my content because it really is just like the cleanser that I've been reaching for a lot lately. And it really comes down to the fact that I really classify this as like a milk cleanser meets a foaming cleanser because December, it's cold, it's chilly, my skin is dry. It's just dry. It's just always dry and that's just the way it is. And so, you know, I switch over my skincare routine. But when it comes to cleansers, you know, milk cleansers that leave a nice amount of moisture on your skin, really nourish your skin, they feel amazing, but I just don't always trust them to clean my skin effectively. I have to tell you, at heart, I am a foaming cleanser girl. I don't know, it must just be my like old like ways from being a teenager in the early 2000s and just loving those really squeaky clean stripping cleansers. You know, that really just made you feel satisfied. Like you knew it did the job and it did the job and then some because it took a good amount of your like essential moisture from your skin and stripped it, right? But it definitely took all the dirt and bacteria and oil away. But I have to say, I really love a good foaming cleanser. I just feel like I can trust it. I feel like it's doing the job. And uh, you know, when you do wear a full face of makeup, you do want a cleanser that does the job. And even when you're not, when you're just wearing sunscreen layers, you want something that does the job. I just crave the satisfied feeling of a foaming cleanser, okay? So that was a big lead up to why I love this so much. Because this has the characteristics of a gentle milk cleanser. It leaves a little bit of moisture on my skin. It doesn't strip it or make it feel a little dry and tight at all. It feels very calming on my skin, but this foams up like a gel cleanser does. So it feels like it's effectively getting in there and really breaking down all of the grime on my face and washing away cleanly. That's another thing about milk cleansers. Sometimes they leave a little bit of that filminess on your skin. Sometimes they don't, but it's kind of like a, like a gamble, right? It just depends on the formulation. And so this is just like the best of both worlds for my my particular bias. I need something gentle and moisturizing, but I want it to foam and I want to feel that satisfaction. And I get that with this cleanser. But I'm also really enjoying the fact that I can leave the shower side because this doubles as a face and body wash. This is low pH. This is 5.5. This is very gentle, but it is still effective enough to be used as a body wash too. And I love that because as I said at the beginning December is when my skin gets very dry it can get very itchy and that's not just stopping at my chin that's my whole entire body so I love that this can double because I know it it's gentle enough for my skin that can get irritated it can get itchy it's going to calm and soothe the skin but it's going to clean effectively so let's stay in the shower because I have another body product that I want to share with you something else you may have seen in my content quite a bit in the last couple of weeks and that is the Bioderma Adam derm shower oil and I love this giant bottle that I found on Target online I love this I had a smaller bottle that I was just like nursing for the longest time I was like please don't be empty and then I found this giant baby and I was like yes <laughs> yes now I have talked about this quite a bit because this is something I reach for a lot in the winter and I actually discovered this product last winter and I don't believe that I have actually honored this as a favorite but it has been serving my skin in the shower so so well especially in the winter time because as the name would suggest this is an oil that you use in the shower this is a moisturizing body wash really but so much more moisturizing than La Roche Posay where La Roche Posay foams and cleans really effectively with just a little whisper of moisture. This is oil. <laughs> this is coating your body in beautiful, not super slippery, but just like beautiful, calming, soothing oil. This is incredibly helpful if you do get irritated, itchy skin. I feel like this just calms the, that skin down so wonderfully. It just envelops it in this beautiful, non-greasy moisture and it just it feels so amazing. You know, I'm just the type of person, my skin is sensitive that when I'm shaving my legs, especially in the winter time, it happens more often. No matter what I do to prep, I do all the right steps. My skin sometimes feels irritated after shaving. Just a layer of this after shaving 
feels incredible. It just calms that irritation down immediately. So if you have seen me talk about this product in the past, you know I'm going to say there is some artificial fragrance in this product. It kind of smells like a baby powder, like a floral baby powder. It's not strong and it doesn't linger. You're not going to smell it on your skin when you get out of the shower. You just smell it on application and I find it pretty pleasant. Now the reason why I would like to make a big deal to point that out is because I personally don't use or talk about uh, products with artificial fragrance. I want to be very clear that I'm not anti-fragrance or like fragrance is evil. I'm not sending that message at all. Um, I kind of have a problem with, with that messaging being out there. I don't think it's evil. However, I have sensitive skin. I legit have a sensitivity to essential oils. I don't mess with that. I know how that has affected my skin and I have a slightly different opinion of essential oils. I'll be honest with you. Artificial fragrance. It could go either way for me. I personally avoid it just to sidestep any possible irritation. As somebody who tests skincare products for a living, it makes sense for me to avoid that ingredient for any possible irritation. When it comes to body products, I'm a lot more adventurous <laughs> with ingredients because my body skin, although still sensitive, is a lot more resilient than my face. So next up, I wanna talk about facial massage and specifically gua sha. So I have been performing performing gua sha massage on my face like almost every single night before I go to bed like all month long and I've gotten so many benefits from this I'm like very excited to share this with you now I want to let you know first and foremost you know gua sha which is this this tool you've probably seen this before it had like a very hot moment like last year, two years ago, uh, this is not about slimming your face. Now that may be a benefit that you get, but I want to be very clear that there's like a very rich history behind gua sha that most of us just don't even embrace because we think this is about slimming the jawline. Um, and it's really not. This is actually a traditional Chinese medicine technique that's about, it, it, it basically is like scraping, sounds scary, right? Scraping the skin. Um, and it's about promoting uh, energy flow and promoting healing using acupressure points on the face. So it's not necessarily for, you know, depuffing your face and getting a slimmer jawline, but it can help with things like tension headaches, migraines. It can really work any type of muscle that you're kind of like feeling knots or built up tension in. It can even help with sleep and stress. And that's actually a benefit that I feel like I'm getting from um, doing this massage technique most nights. Um, I chose mine in the stone amethyst. You can find jade, you can find rose quartz. Those are very popular. I kind of enjoy, and I was like starting to get into the language of crystals and, and what they represent and what they can mean. And amethyst is definitely a very powerful, uplifting, high vibrational stone that helps with like stress and anxiety. It can help with sleep. Um, and so that's kind of why I chose this particular one because that's really what I wanted to bring into the gua sha practice was really relieving stress, tension, pain in my body. In the past, I've been a fan of using a facial roller for massage, and I still am. Um, I think it's a very handy tool, um, especially if you do want to use massage to relieve tension um, and like built up like muscle knots in your face. I think that a facial roller is a great way to go. You can even just use your hands quite honestly, like you don't have to spend money on fancy tools. But the biggest difference I've noticed from a facial roller to graduating onto gua sha is that gua sha can actually get into the muscle so much deeper. It can really work the muscle. So if you do have a lot of tension, a lot of pain, and you're really willing to work it, this tool is gonna get a lot deeper for you. So here's how I use the gua sha tool. First of all, you wanna do this at the end of your skincare routine after you've put on moisture and um, preferably even putting on some oil. Uh, you want a lot of lubrication on your skin. You don't want any friction. You don't want any pulling as you scrape the gua sha across your skin. So make sure you've got lots of good lubrication. Now it's important to get really good contact um, with the tool and your skin. So, you know, you don't want to just like go in an up and down angle. It's not about getting the edge of the tool on your skin. It's about making more contact with your skin. So really thinking about uh, positioning the tool at like a 15 degree angle and then kind of scraping uh, upwards 
uh, using that tool. So just gonna make sure you've always got that angle in mind and always scrape upwards. That's the technique for the gua sha massage is going in upward strokes. Um, whereas in like lymphatic massage, you would start from the top and kind of work your way in downward strokes. This is all about going upwards. Be firm, but be gentle on your skin because this is actually a lot more powerful than you might think it is at first. And actually the traditional method for gua sha is actually to leave like you actually see a lot of people with like red strokes like when you use it on the back um, it's a very powerful tool like I was saying before it can get really deep into that muscle tissue so start off a little bit gentler than you might think and then kind of figure out your pressure um, that you're most comfortable with from there but just be very very gentle but I love this especially for like working like my neck I get a lot of like shoulder uh, tension this can really work into the muscles in a way a facial roll just can't you can work this up the back of your neck you can use uh, the these points here I don't know what these are exactly called but to really kind of work acupressure points in your face it feels amazing there's this gorgeous release not only of tension and, and of like muscle knots but it just kind of almost makes my head feel a little bit clearer you know it's it's about energy flow it's about blood circulation it's about um getting everything going again and i do feel that sensation when i'm using this so it's definitely a very different technique than what i'm used to but i've just been reaping so many benefits from it and as i mentioned i do this almost every single night before i go to bed it really has has become a bedtime ritual for me and I think that's why I've been enjoying it so much and why I have been reaping so many benefits from it because it's not just about working out like tension points in my face but it's a whole ritual of getting ready for bed of unwinding for the day getting a little bit more in tune with myself um, because you get very, very clear on where your pain points are, where you're holding tension on your face and in your shoulders and neck when you use this. This isn't always the most pleasant experience, um, but I feel like I'm like, oh, wow, I have so much tension in my jaw today. What's that about? And so I feel like I'm checking in with myself more. It's like a physical way for me to perform a self-care check, um, which is something historically I'm not always very good at. <laughs> I can just kind of like keep moving, keep moving, keep moving and not really acknowledge what's going on inside of me, right? But like when I am using this as a nighttime ritual, not only to soothe muscle tension, but also to address maybe why I'm feeling tension, why I'm feeling stress, why I'm feeling pain in certain parts of my body. It gets me more in tune with myself. It gives me a little bit of that release of tension and stress. And it really just prepares me for sleep. So it's actually checking off a lot of boxes for me. And so that's why I said, this is so much more than slimming your jawline. <laughs> um, and I've just been reaping so many benefits from it from so many different perspectives. And I wanted to share it with you because it's been huge, not only for skincare, but like also as kind of like a self-care method too. I cannot believe that 2021 is coming to a close. In a way, this has felt like a very short year. And from another perspective, I feel like it's just been one mega year. <laughs> 2020 and 2021 kind of all feel like the same thing. At this point, I don't feel like years are existing in like beautiful 12 month increments. I really do feel like this is an era that we're going through and um, it's a challenging era. And I think particularly this part of the era, 2021, for me personally, was a challenge. It was a challenging year. Um, I had to go through a lot of things. I had to go through. I had to go through these challenges. I had to face a lot of things that I've been ignoring for a long time or just sweeping under the rug. I had to come face to face with it. Some of us did that in 2020. I did it in 2021. Maybe you did too. It was a challenging year, but it was kind of like the challenges I needed to face. You know, um, it was not easy. It was hard. It was, it was frustrating at times, but I feel like it has helped me so much as a person. It's made me stronger. And I've talked about quite a few of these things on the podcast, especially facing my burnout, especially facing things about my life that I don't like, that I need to make positive changes in. And in a way, I'm very, very grateful for those challenges. You know, it's maybe you're not resonating with that because maybe you're going through your own challenges and you don't feel grateful for them. And I understand that. I do. 
I personally feel grateful because I feel like these challenges have helped me elevate to a better place or have helped put me on a path to a better version of my life or to a better version of myself because I was able to have the awareness of the things that needed to change. It was not fun to be shown those things that needed to be fixed, those things that I've been ignoring for a really long time. But now that I have the awareness, it's, it is hard and making those changes is not, are not easy, but I just feel grateful to be on the path. You know what I mean? To be on the path to healing burnout, to be on the path to healing unhealthy relationships with work, you know, um, just being on the path to treating myself in a kinder, gentler way for practicing forgiveness for myself and others. So the point that I'm trying to make right now, reflect on the year that you've had. My favorite time of year really is the end of the year because I always love looking back. What has happened, good, bad, ugly, and in between, reflecting on that, what challenged me? What pushed me? What made me grow? What was fun? You know, what was great? What was joyful? What wasn't? You know, what are some things I want to leave in 2021? Things I don't want to bring into the new year. Energy, people, situations, behaviors of my own that I just, I'm done, you know? I'm done not having boundaries. I'm done being a people pleaser, right? Those types of things. It's good to reflect on what you want to leave behind, but it's also good to reflect on what you want to invite in for the new year. And so I really want to encourage you to do this. I did a podcast that was just released on maybe some exercises and journaling um, prompts that you can use to do your own reflection on the past year and setting your own intentions for the coming year. So if you need some inspiration, you can definitely check that podcast out and kind of get a peek into what um, to the process that I use to do so. Um, but you can do anything that you want to do, whatever resonates with you. I just want to encourage you to look back and Sometimes years can feel hard, they can feel challenging, but when you actually go back into the details, you're like, oh, actually, there was some good stuff here. Or actually, it was hard, but I realized the outcome of it was kind of worth it. So I just wanna really encourage you to do that reflection before we move into a fresh, brand new 2022. So let me know all of your favorite products from December in the comments below. If you made it this far in the video and you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider hitting subscribe. Maybe we are vibing here. If you wanna see more from me, just like this video, hit subscribe and don't forget to turn on notifications because I do release a lot of new content throughout the week and you don't wanna miss out on any of it. I hope you are happy, healthy. <laughs> I really hope that you are healthy and safe in this new year. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.